Call the regular city council meeting order. Invocation by Pastor Mike Danchek, First Presbyterian okay. Church. For those who wish to pray, uh, please join me as we direct these following words to God. Gracious Lord, we thank you and ask your attention and your guidance for the business of our city. We thank you for the beautiful weather of this day, as well as for the safety and provision of all our citizens in the uncertain weather and days to come. May your blessings of safety be upon all in our community throughout our winter season. As our community's elected leaders gather to hear reports, to gain information, and to make decisions, may you guide each of them in heart and mind as you lead all to seek after the greatest common good. Let all discussions and deliberations be civil, and when differences arise, may the good of the city always be the focus that is never lost. In all things, may we ever be mindful of your love, your guidance, and blessings. This we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here. 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 The first few years, he showed great enthusiasm in learning the different tasks. The next five years or so, he did both jobs very well and should be commended for his great effort. However, this past year, his 10th year, he announced his resignation from football, and also this being his last year of basketball, I've noticed his performance has started to decline. <laughs> the other night at the ball game, there was a few players had fallen to the ground. Sweat was on the floor, a lot of water and stuff. And manager usually goes out there and wipes the floor up with the towel. I noticed Josh took the towels out, but made the referee wipe the floor. <laughs> then about 10 minutes later, the same thing happened at the other end. Josh again took the towels out, made the players wipe the towels. <laughs> so right then I noticed that. So Josh Smith has come forward and I can <laughs> The Certificate of Appreciation is hereby awarded to Josh Smith for his outstanding volunteerism in helping others. I, Bruce Berry, Mayor of the City of Taylorville, Taylorville, hereby proclaim February 3rd, 2020 as Josh Smith Day.
Education in the State of Illinois, and that you will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of Assistant Fire Chief according to the best of your ability. Thank you. Thank you.
Omnibus vote designation. Your Honor, I'd like to make a motion to approve the use of the omnibus vote designation to approve the minutes of the regular meeting held January 31st, 2019, and the minutes of the public facilities committee held January 31st, 2019, and the minutes of the street and sewer committee held January 31st, 2019, with amendments. Matt, what's that? I'll take a look at the Go ahead, on. Motion to approve by all of the Second. Second by all of all the comments. All right. The, the comments are that uh, the, uh, in the first paragraph of the minutes, um, there was a, uh, an indication that we, uh, in the discussion, we were going to um, pay for uh, the $121,213 and associates uh, using money coming from the DVD funds and although it's in the discussion it's not in the it's not in the, the motion so that so that causes the street sewer uh, meeting uh, street sewer agenda item into the agenda uh, it also needs to have that in the in the meet in the motion that with the uh, rest of the money coming from the, the 121213 dollars coming from the BDD funds. Also, um, in the first item, the uh, land property on Sportsman Drive, there's uh, in the first sentence uh, where it says discuss a city storm sewer. Uh, the city, the word city needs to be omitted from that. We discussed that at the meeting, but it inadvertently got put into the minutes. Also on the second page, uh, with the uh, the motion concerning the stop sign at Shumway and Second, the way the, the uh, motion is worded, um, it, you don't know whether we're talking about the, the, the stop sign on Shumway or the stop sign on Second. So the, the the motion ought to be amended to say the stop sign located and the word at should be on the sign, stop sign located on Shumway and the and the word and should be at. So it'd be. The stop sign is located on Shumway at Second Street. That's that's it. That's the amendment. Roll call and amended. Um, <coughs> Larry Bud. Yes. Sean Bertel. Yes. Ray George. Yes. Kathy Grimsel. Yes. Leon Zadi. Yes. Jim Wallace. Yes. Patrick. Yes. 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 Brian. Yes. Motion carries eight to zero. Planning Commission recommendations. Mayor, the unanimous vote from the Planning Commission on an ordinance granting special use for the subdivision of a single lot of commercial property with an adjoining and connected building in a C1 zoning district located at 205 East Main Cross. 5 to 0. Unanimous. Thank you, sir. In order to grant special use for the subdivision of a single lot of commercial property in an adjoining and connected building in a C1 zoning district located at 205 East Main Cross Street, Canada, Illinois. Motion to approve that ordinance. Most of all, in Bud. Second, all in Driscoll. Comments and questions? Roll call. Yes. Bernie Dorsonet? Yes. Kathy Driscoll? Yes. Leland Zotti? Yes. Jim Yes. 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 Mayor Bryant? Yes. Mayor Bryant? Yes. Mayor Bryant votes yes. Motion carries 9 to 0. <laughs> <laughs> An ordinance amending Chapter 3 and Section 3-15-1 and 3-15-2 of the Chapter 15 of Title 3 of the Tenerville City Code. Liquor license video gaming permit. Motion by... Alderman Dorsen has second. Alderman Bryant, questions or comments? Alderman Bertle. During the Orders Committee, we talked about changing the price of the liquor license and permitting a couple of different classifications. But I don't remember having a conversation about permitting the number of liquor licenses at, as a total, uh, cutting out the number of liquor licenses. And I understand some people feel like the you know, as the mayor pointed out earlier, if a Hooters moves to town, that we would probably grant them a liquor license, and if they want a video game, we probably would too. 
uh, we see we've seen how this worked for the last four or five years. It's normally somebody that's got 15 square foot of property that wants to put five video gaming uh, terminals in, and that's what we're getting. We're not getting restaurants, and we're not getting bars unless they're already established. But they're already established. I understand that. I just think that we can go back and change that number anytime we want. I just think that there should be a number associated with these licenses. If I could comment, Mayor. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Number one, the actual ordinance that you that you folks have it before you uh, has been revised today after some long conversations with uh, Cindy, the deputy clerk. Uh, she was pointing out some things that uh, we needed to, to change, and her comments were uh, very valuable and well worth taking. So I have you haven't seen those changes. So this is something probably going to take back to committee anyway to take a look at. But the the uh, instructions that I had after talking with the mayor was to put together, as I put in my email to all of you, this is a complete rewrite of your liquor code. It basically uh, eliminates any restrictions, as you pointed out, Sean, as to the number of liquor licenses with or without video gaming privileges. That's what this ordinance does. So if you want to put a number on there, we, we need to get that established and put that back in there. It also took away that formula about whether or not you have 30% alcohol sales or 30% grocery sales, plus or minus that number, and, and that was taken out of here. It did change the definitions for what we would call taverns, lounges, restaurants, and, and grocery stores, and it was just, at least my instructions were, is to have a $3,000 annual fee, not subject to probation. If you come in the middle of the year, you still pay $3,000 to get a liquor license that would allow video gaming. Uh, that's what that ordinance does. Now, when I talk to Cindy, there's been a lot of folks that have been coming forward here and, you know, asking for video gaming. And so, at least this afternoon, she and I came up with what we call a Class O license. And the Class O license, I'll just summarize to you what, you haven't seen that wording yet, but it would be a business, any business establishment that's approved by you folks, the city council, from time to time. You would approve anybody's establishment, or you could deny it, that is located in a C1 commercial district or a C2 to sell alcohol, liquor, and retail for consumption on the premises, but only in a separate enclosed room where video gaming terminals are located, and all the plans, specifications, and location of that room would have to be approved by you folks and that the gaming board would have to actually authorize the placement of those particular videos. If you recall, that is similar language to when you created the Class M for that convenience store, you know, some months ago. So my suggestion to you is, and, and the city had a couple other uh, uh, typos she found later this afternoon. I did not get a chance to speak with her before she went home. I made the change. What I had to do is let Cindy take a final look at it in the morning and then send it and send this entire revised orders to you, take it to your committee, and you guys can decide whether you want to go up or down. Mary, when you make, I got an email from you, uh, you'll very well take it about putting on each of the different classes of license, whether or not it does or does not allow video gaming, those changes have been made. Thank you. So you'll see that. So uh, that's my suggestion is that you uh, just uh, uh, refer this issue back to your committee. I'll get out to you tomorrow the most recent revised liquor awards for you guys to uh, take a look at. If you want a limited, obviously we need to put some limits back in. But uh, remember you had limits around the downtown square, then you had lim limits for certain types of licenses. Those were all uh, the approved instructions that I was given. Now I'm just one vote. I mean, the rest of these guys might <clears throat> want, may not want limits, but I think, I think we didn't talk about that. So I, if we're going back to the committee, I'm fine with that. If you're collecting three thousand dollars per <clears throat> video gaming, uh, at some point there's got to be some saturation. <laughs> you would say. Ernie's been saying that for eighteen years. <laughs> they ain't reached it yet. <laughs> but if not, you think of all the money you're going to make. <laughs> so three, we just got three thousand dollars a day, let alone three thousand dollars a year. That, I mean, it'll it help. It ain't got to help that much. So that, that's my suggestion, because in fairness to all of you, you haven't seen. <coughs> this work product to put on your table. It's fine. All of them, George? Yeah, this is going back to committee. I'm, I don't think we're going to need to spend a lot of time debating this right. tonight, but, you know, I'm, I feel just the opposite that you do. You know, I don't think there ought to be a 
and let it, and I think the market ought to be able to drive with it, whatever, however many places will stay open. I don't think there's that many discretionary dollars out there now to, to support very many more. But I said that before uh, some of these heavy hitters have come to town too. I said there wasn't any more dollars. It's well, here, here it's they come. Well, the, the, the money must be coming out of Woodward because I don't know where it's coming from. But that's my opinion, and it's going back to the committee, so that's good. I agree. I think it should go back to committee. The only reason I brought it up at the council meeting tonight without going to the committee <clears throat> is our next council meeting is before the ordinance committee this month, so we won't be able to vote on it until March if it goes through committee. And I thought we, we should give the people or the people that have the gaming at least a month or two to decide whether they are going to pay the $3,000. So in no means did I try to push something through without going to committee. I thought with the timeliness of it that we could vote on it. I thought it was hands down. We all voted a month ago to go to the uh, $3,000 fee, and I agree with all the endorsement is that sometimes we're going to reach that saturation point. I've heard to the grapevine there's a few people that are not going to pay it. I'm perfectly fine with that. We seem to have got a hold on it. We are getting, uh, I think this year, this, this fiscal year, we'll get over $300,000 for video gaming. And uh, with the way our general fund is, I think it's well. So uh, that will just go to committee. This is kind of time sensitive though. Because doesn't liquor license have to be renewed by May 1st? Yes, sir. So it is a little time sensitive to get it out there yes. so that everybody knows what's going on. So you know, we can't keep kicking the can down the road too long. And if, if you have your ordinance committee here in February, Chapter 9 to Title 6 of the Taylorville City Code, operation of UTVs in the city. Motion by Alderman Bryant. Second. Second by Alderman Scaltetti. Questions or comments? I have a comment. Okay. Yeah. I would like to add to that motion to adopt this ordinance, assuming they get satisfied with it, is to also to approve the form of the application dash inspection report dash permit that I prepared and submitted to all of you. So once this works is in effect, that permit will also be approved by you folks. I've sent that to you in an email. All right. Most of the states are saying with that direction. Okay. Yeah. okay, roll call. Ernie Dorsey? Yes. Kathy Driscoll? Yes. Lee Lanzotti? Yes. Jim Ellis? Yes. 
Chris Cotetti? Yes. Megan Bryant? Yes. Larry Bud? Reluctantly, yes. Sean and the mayor votes yes. yes. The mayor and Barry votes yes. Motion carries nine to zero. Resolution, the trash dumpster, dumpster attendant agreement. Move. Move. Most of all, in Dorsen is. Second. Second of all, in Bud. Roll, or excuse me, questions or comments on it. Roll call. Kathy Driscoll? Yes. Leland Dottie? Yes. Jim Wallace? Yes. Crystal Teddy? Yes. Megan Bryant? Yes. Larry Bud? Yes. Sean Burdo? Yes. Ernie Dorsen? Yes. Motion carries 8 to 0. Motion to bid and or advertise a deputy clerk position. Most of all, Bryant, second. Second. Alderman Allen, questions or comments? Roll call. Lee Lanzotti? Yes. Jim Allen? Yes. Chris Petty? Yes. Megan Bryant? Yes. Larry Bud? Yes. Sean Bertle? Yes. Ernie Dorsen? Yes. Yes. Motion carries 8 to 0. Mr. Mayor, can I interrupt for a moment? Yes, Just going sir. back to the UTV ordinance, I want to point out is that you'll need to get that letter police chief needs to, quote, do the investigation and to sign off on that letter and submit it to the city clerk. That's the statutory required letter form that I prepared for that you guys all had a copy of. It. So just so you understand, that has to be filed with the city clerk before we can put this into effect, but we already know we're, we've delayed this to go into effect until sometime later this year. Okay. <clears throat> Motion to direct the city attorney to prepare an ordinance to amend the city code to remove the stop sign at the intersection of Shumway and 2nd Street. Motion by <coughs> Alderman Dorchinez, second. Do I hear a second? Okay, second by Alderman Bertle. Comment, Alderman Dorchinez. Um, you know, we, we were told that the, the reason that stop sign was there is because it, years ago there was a bus stop there for picking up children going to school. Um, I don't feel strongly either way, but by the same token, that stop sign, those streets, it's you know, those are um, collector streets. That's a, that's supposed to be an arterial arterial street. Is that right? Uh, Yes. Okay. It's an arterial street. I was, uh, and so anyway, that uh, you're not supposed to, the state recommends that you don't impede uh, flow of traffic. And for example, that's like the, uh, we've got a stoplight there uh, uh, out there by Kroger uh, on the curve. And that stoplight um, is mostly green on 29. And it's mostly red the other way because of the fact that they said that they don't want to impede traffic. And we we thought that it was out of line because of the fact that a lot of times when people come up to that stop sign from Kroger's, you sit there for a long time, okay? Uh, and, uh, and we try to get them to change that, but they, they explained to us that, that's, that, that the, the predominant flow of traffic ought to be on Route 29, not from Kroger's. So um, this, is a, this is not a similar thing, but it's just a, if you were to have I think a, a traffic study done, they would say, don't put that stop sign there. It's kind of an odd thing that you're coming uh, north on Shumway and quite a bit away from 2nd Street, uh, that's, that stop sign sits from here to that wall. That's not even on the corner. Uh, so if you stop with the proper spot, you're, well, you're supposed to stop. You're getting a running start anyway. So it's, it's practically not there. Um, so uh, I, I'm for it. We're removing it. It sounds like Megan brought it here, and I don't know what she, uh, just as a as a request, she doesn't feel strongly either way, I don't think, but I think she's against it because she wouldn't second that motion. <laughs> <laughs> Roll call, <coughs> Alderman Just the other, <clears throat> the other side of that, that coin, uh, that stop sign is not, not on a major thoroughfare, so it's, uh, that stop sign has been there probably as long as I can remember. Uh, and, and the mayor made a comment. They said, we probably, if we remove it, we'll probably have more accidents. Uh, there has, there's only been two accidents in the last 10 years, and they were minor in nature. You take that stop sign away, which it's not really, it's not hurting a thing. Everybody.
everybody in town has probably got used to that stop sign being there. So about the time you get them retrained, there's not one there, and they go flying through there, and everybody on Shum or on Second Street thinks they're going to stop. T-bone. So I think it's it's not broke. So why do we need to fix something that's not broke? I, I would rather just see it go away. Just good. Roll call. Jim Ollis. Uh, no. Crystal Petty. No. Megan Bryant. No. Larry Bud. No. John Bertel. No. Ernie Dortonez. <laughs> Where am I going to get some support? Lee, are you going to support me? On this? No, you're going to vote no too. Okay, I vote yes. <laughs> no. Motion failed seven to one. Motion to direct the mayor to sign the Pawpaw Street drainage study by Bitten and Associates at a cost not to exceed $13,800. To be paid with Ward One utility tax money. Motion by Alderman Allen, second for Alderman mm -hmm. Bud. Comment, Alderman Bud. This is an area that we have a lot of flooding in. Uh, it's even going. It's, it's got up to the guy in his garage. It's right at his house. Uh, it's something that has to be addressed. So Jim and I are willing to pay at least the initial cost out of our Ward One money to see where we can move this water too, so that's what it's about. Roll call. Crystal Petty? Yes. Megan Bryant? Yes. Larry Bud? Yes. John Berto? Yes. Ernie Borson? Yes. Kathy Bristol? Yes. Leila Anzotti? Yes. Jim Wallace? Yes. Motion carries eight to zero. Motion to direct the city attorney to prepare an agreement with Bitman <coughs> Associates concerning the engineering work to be formed for the city as may be requested by the city from time to time. Most of all, Second. Good. Second. Second of all, the knowledge. Comments? Can I speak to that, Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. Okay, we're going to see me. We had a conversation also with Reggie Bitt. Is, is he there at the meeting? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think, what, I think the direction that uh, the mayor is asking here is that probably come in May, he will be making an appointment of Ben Associates as the city attorney. <coughs> That's an office engineer. City engineer. Roger. City, city engineer. I'm, not, I'm not replacing you. But, <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. but you may be replaced. His <laughs> <laughs> term of office doesn't expire until then. And absent a resignation, uh, we can't make that change at this time. So, but I think the city engineering board, I think the mayor's intent is to forward on to Ben Associate associates for them to do the work from now until then. So this agreement that we talked about, I think Mr. I think Reggie's got a form he wants me to look at. It's, it's kind of like, I think it's going to be like our work order form, uh, format so that from perhaps on some minor project between three to five thousand, what have you, the mayor would have the discretion to have them do the work uh, on a work order. Anything larger than that probably will be the work requires you know, approval from you folks. And as time to time goes on, like you've got a bigger project here later on um, uh, in your minutes here, that would be by a separate contract. So I think if you pass this motion, that's the kind of agreement that I'm going to be working with Reggie to put together that will come back to the next council meeting for your consideration and approval. Is that your understanding, Mayor? Yes, sir. No. Is that your understanding, Reggie? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Roll call. <clears throat> Megan Bryant? Yes. Larry Bud? Yes. John Bertel? Yes. Tony Dorsey? Yes. Kathy Driscoll? Yes. Leon Anzotti? Yes. Jim Wallace? Yes. Crystal Petty? Yes. Motion carries 8 to 0. Motion to direct the mayor to sign the notice of award for the Ward 3 Franklin Street Storm Sewer Project for Phil Tullis Excavating in the low bid of $212,817. Motion by Alderman Dorsey? Second. Second by Alderman Bryant? Questions or comments? Comment, Alderman Bud. In this this particular project, there was <coughs> money set aside for this project. We went through the minutes. Jim worked probably an hour today going through minutes. Uh, there's been nothing set aside for this project. So, uh, I'd like for Jackie to say where this money will come from and how we're going to be able to approve this project. But we need to understand one thing. This is not the way we should be doing these projects. 
This project should have went through committee, should have been approved through committee, and the funds allocated. This was not done. That the one, the first one we did for Ward 3 was, it was followed the procedures, Ward 1, <coughs> Ward 3 put up 100,000, Ward 2 put up 50,000, and uh, the non-home world excess put up 78,942.96. But in order for this project to even be done, um, it will have to come out of non-home world, which Jackie will explain was accounts. But when it goes out of the two pro projects together total 441,759.96 with the 78,000 coming out of non-home world, then $212,817 would need to come out of the non-home world excess. That total is 291,759.96. When you take that out, what's in the account currently Account currently has 439,932.65. You take the 291,759.96 out, that leaves 148,172.69 left in the non home world excess account. We cannot continue to do this. That's putting that account down. Now, I'm not going to hide any secrets. Back last, late last summer or summer, we took 300,000 out of that, Jackie and I did, because we were looking to be able to make some money. We put that in a CD, and currently that's in CD, and we've already drawn $7,000 interest off of that CD, trying to make some money. That comes due in April, so you would have that, but we don't want to delete that account, because if we had a major sewer collapse, we've got to have some funds to work with. Uh, you know. One, that one class at one time was like $100,000, $110,000. And we used, I think we used the non-home world for those type of projects. So, but that's where we were able to find the money to pay for this project to get it done for you. But everybody needs to understand, Ward 1's got a couple of great issues that we're going to need some help here down the road that we've already brought to the table. And I have pictures where I was standing in water in a house. Oh, mm -hmm. Ward how did they get this far if it didn't go through the committee and get approved? That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Rocky, I think we need a refresher course on how. I think, it well. <clears throat> I think we need a refresher course on how things get approved and paid for because it seems like these creep up on us for some reason that it's just like somebody decides. I'm not blaming anybody, but it seems like just arbitrarily somebody decides we're going to do a project that costs seventy thousand dollars. But it didn't go through the committee, it didn't get voted on, and it shows up on the council agenda, and then we're kind of scrambled to find out where we're going to pay for it. That's not how this process works, is it? It typically has not been the practice of the city council for years. It usually goes to the committee first, then it comes, it went, comes out of committee, and it's placed on the city council for the consideration of approval. That's the way it's been done. All the majority of this? I'm, this explanation may not be correct, but I, I think it is. I look back at today at the same problem because of the fact that when we had all the other projects that were identified to be done in War Three, they weren't just routine fixes. These are problems that people have had for years. Um, and this one, um, I think it, it was the Johnny Come Lately project along with the other three that we had identified because what happened was um, the last time we had that big five-inch rain, I forget what the time frame was when we did that, I had uh, a person in Ward 3, I won't tell you who they were, um, I could tell you if you want to know, but anyway, um, he, um, he called me, uh, the gentleman called me when we were having that big rain, and he called me and asked me if, um, if the city had any sandbags that we could loan him, give him, and um, I said, I don't think I've ever seen a, a, sand, a real sandbag. I've seen people doing it on TV, filling sandbags to, to put in, but I've never seen anybody put a sandbag in Taylorville at, a, at any place. And I said, I'm pretty sure we don't have them, but I'll check. So, um, and, I, and I did, and after hearing him, uh, his plight, what he was concerned about was that this, this project here, um, water's coming down the street, it goes to the corner, and it won't, it won't, the, the, the storm sewer won't handle it. It won't take the water. So the problem is that it's going to, across the front yard, and his threshold is level with the, with the, with the yard. 
to go in the house. Okay. Um, and so this has been an ongoing problem with, for him. I, I wasn't aware of it. Um, he, had called, he had called the mayor. Uh, I don't know, I don't think it was you. I think it was, it was Greg Brotherton was the last one he called and reported it for a problem to him, but it never did get to the street and serve committee. It never come before the committee. And so, um, it, and so he was explaining to me that this is the situation and the water, if this, he doesn't have sandbags, the water is apt to come in right into the front door. If it comes into the front door, it's coming in the house, basement, and everything. He's gonna have a considerable amount of damage. And he explained to me that he tried to buy flood insurance to, to fix this. There was two different kinds of insurance that he had suggested to his agent that he was going to purchase, but those options weren't available. They, they wouldn't sell him that insurance. So he was out on the limb. <coughs> so I just, I just found out about the problem by accident, and it's a serious problem. So we wanted to take care of this problem, and this was, this was on the tail end of those other three, and I, don't, and I looked at my documentation today, and were the other three, I've got the paperwork at home, were the other three projects were detailed by Earl Walters on that piece of paper, but this one was inadvertently omitted. And so when we were talking about all that, I didn't recognize it wasn't until later on. And it's, it's on that sheet, but it's only my put it on that sheet. And it's, it, it's under the category of stormwater problems in Ward 3. Okay, so it is on there, but it, it, it got missed when the discussion, that's why I didn't get discussed in committee. It was after those other ones were reported, this one was reported. We've located the funds, but the, we need to start the proper procedure to do these type of yeah. Well, this wasn't a, you know, we weren't trying to circumvent the system, it was just a, that's the way, that's what happened. And then the day I looked it up, I, I, I too tried to find out if it ever went to committee and it, it never did. Right. I, I'm not saying, I get, I get I'm not saying you circumvented the, how come it didn't go to street and sewer before it came to council? I mean, this per, this particular project here. Yeah, I mean, they're because mostly, they're it, went, it went to the. It didn't come to me. I wasn't. I wasn't aware of it until the the sandbag issue when it was happening, and that we'd already discussed those others at that time. I mean, we, we I mean somebody, somebody wrote this motion. Whoever wrote that motion could have put it on street and sewer, and not on the council agenda, so it could have been discussed on on the committee to find out where the money was going to come from if we had to spend on it. Whether that was the top priority to spend all that money that's left in the, the overage on the non home I, 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 I don't have, have a problem doing it anyway. by the proper process. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not browbeating, I'm just wondering how it got here. I, I got a question. Go I'm trying to understand the motion. Maybe I'm reading it wrong. But have we actually had a motion to approve sending it out for bids? Right. We, we have to have a motion. Is there a motion for the contract, Julie? I don't know that there was ever a motion. All I know is all of a sudden the bid packet showed up and it was already put in the paper and it wasn't put in the, that wasn't done through me. It was done through our city engineer. It, it never came through street and sewer. And I don't know how it got there. The only thing that came through street and sewer was the one on uh, our board water, all the elevator and then, then that came through. And we hadn't looked at it, went out for bid, came back with the amount, and then we, uh, we sent it out for bid and got bids back and okay. This one here, I didn't hear anything about. I read about the paper. If I believe the timing of it was we were going to do the issue on England and Rich Street and also Morton Avenue last fall, we put that out for bid, but I also thought either through council or through some committee, we gave Joe Green as we were transitioning from him until to the new engineer that he was supposed to do the engineering studies on that. Now, I'm not making that up. It came out of somewhere. So that's why I think Joe did put it out, did the engineering put it out for bid. And I was unaware it would be $207,000, but of course it is. So now we put it out for bid. We've got, we have five or six bidders on it. And Mr. Budd has found the money. And so now I guess we can either approve it or whatever the council would like to do. I mean, so I number one, I think, <coughs> I think procedurally here, this is, the motion is to sign a notice of award. That presumes that a contract has been signed. There's no motion to authorize you to sign a contract. As a, you know, as a contract meet our, our requirements, prevailing wage, insurance requirements, and things of that sort. So if you're going to go forward with it, the motion needs to be amended here to, to authorize you, Mayor, to sign whatever contract that someone prepared. 
insurance are submitted, as typically what Joe would write the contract in, once the requirements of insurance are submitted and, and the requisite, you know, preventing waste certificates, then you issue the notice of award. That's how it's usually done. So that's why this motion is kind of confusing me. I don't see anything that you guys approve the contract yet. So what, what steps do you think we should go through now then? I'm sorry? What steps should we go through now legally? Well, have, has anyone seen the contract? There is no contract yet. The contract comes after Reggie, is this correct? What's that? Reggie. If the contract ever comes out, we approve that we're going to accept the low bid. But yeah. once you have the contract, you have to have to sign a contract with you that requires all the state requirements. Right. And then once you take accept the low bid, authorizes you to sign the contract, and then you send out the notice of, of award to the bidder and say, okay, now provide us with your insurance certificate with the performance and payment bond. And then once you get that timely in a timely fashion, then you issue the notice to proceed. That's how it's usually done. I think Reggie will probably confirm that if he's still there. I am, and, and that is a good summary. Contract documents are prepared, and that's what they bid on. So it gets confusing when you talk about contract documents. They're blank contract documents demonstrating the requirements of the particular project. Normally, if we have a project that wasn't authorized for advertisements for bids by a city council, then the city council formally waives bidding and accepts a certain proposal. So that would also be an option that you might have. But if you have contract documents that all of the bidders bid on, they would eventually be the contract once the city council takes the action that uh, Rocky just briefly described. Where you have a notice of award, they provide all the necessary documents. They're properly reviewed for their compliance with the city and the state requirements. And then only after then do you actually issue a notice to proceed. And I believe all these documents were submitted on time to the bidding last Friday, so. Yes, they were. Yeah. Exactly. So, I, I, so think, I think the doctors like, uh, were just saying up here, because I, I looked at the packet that Julie has in her office there, and there's some prints, and I think there's, it's got all the <coughs> documents. So I think it's, it's a worthwhile project. How it got to the point that where it's at, I, I don't think anybody can answer that question. But I think it is a worthwhile project. It was done one other time, and it was done, um, let's see, how do I state it? It was done as cheap as we could with plastic pipe around the corner, and then uh, and it didn't work. So uh, that this is the, the proper way of doing it. I, I don't know how it got there, but it, it looked like, I, I looked at the, the prints today for what I know about them. And it, uh, Jackie? Hold on, Rocky. Okay. So ideally, when you have a project that you want to do, budget, beginning of budget is when you should be talking about, hey, let's put this in the budget. This, this was not a project that was known when we did the budget. Well, Ernie said it's been happening for several years. But he wasn't aware of it. Until. But mm -hmm. we have two line items in sewer in the sewer fund. Um, we have your maintenance special project, which has 236885 left in that budget balance um, with 400000 in appropriations. Under sewer special projects, there's only $100,000 appropriated for that line item. But <coughs> my, my suggestion is if you know of any projects you need to be done, make sure that at budget time, those get talked to your street and sewer superintendents, your water superintendent, lake, cemetery, anybody that has a project. Make sure it gets in their budgets. Um, now, I passed out that pack, this information to you that y'all should have. Um, and also, what is in that non home rule excess bank account? But like Larry said, if you take that, you're going to deplete it down to $148,000. And so, but we do have the, um, 
because there's three hundred thousand dollars in the CD, which Larry, I believe that was in the finance committee, so it's no big secret. Um, well, I just wanted to make sure yeah. all aware of that. No, but that um, that is also available. But you also need to remember any time in from in the now to the future when we're making these bond payments for the uh, two and a half and the seven and a half million, the 30 inch Northeast sewer and the phase five, I think part of that money also, Larry, was to be put set aside in case we're not receiving enough non homo money because we have had to transfer money out of this non homo excess to cover the monthly for those bond payments already this year and last year. Any questions on that? All of them, all of them, then we'll vote. Okay, I, I just wanted to say, in an earlier conversation this evening with, with Reggie, we, we didn't, uh, I didn't mention the project, and I know what the project is, that uh, he assured me that everything will have a paper trail uh, associated with whatever project we're working on. So. Uh, I think it will alleviate this problem because they're not going to go forward with something that they don't have documentation to tell them to go forward with it. My yes. suggestion, Mayor, if I may, given if, it, if you want to go forward with this project, unless there's an outstanding emergency to begin tomorrow, I think we need to get uh, either have Reggie or I or both of us take a look at the contract, make sure what was done, what was said, and we'll put the right motion on the council agenda and that second meeting in February, and you can act on it then. Mm -hmm. But this motion is, is presumes that whatever he was supposed to find and present to the city, it doesn't say it's been done. I think you need to do that given the size of this project. I think we should probably agree with that. Pardon? It was not done by an engineer. Right. We, it was completely done by our by our Cindy engineer now, Rocky. And I think the issue is, as we were transitioning from engineer to Reggie, we thought, I think our former or our current city engineer hurried this project along, knowing that he would no longer be our city engineer. So, but if you want to delay it till the February 18th meeting, I'm fine with that. And I'm not saying Joe didn't do, uh, send out the right documents. I'm not saying that at all. I still mean he has set out four contracts and he, and he followed the process. It's just that it hasn't come to you to accept the contract, authorize you to sign it, authorize you to send out the notice of award and ask for these things. I mean, that's all I'm suggesting. Given the size of this project, I think get all the, uh, get the documents together, uh, you look at it, Reggie can look at it, I can look at it, and put the pieces together, and whatever the motion needs to say next two weeks from now, you vote on it then. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a problem with that. It, it, it's, it's my board, and I don't have a problem with that. And it sounds like, uh, uh, you can say for yourself what you think. It's my uh, board too. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm saying uh, Larry found the money, and so I think that, uh, <clears throat> that, uh, it ought to be approved, but I don't have a problem with doing it. Well, I think we table it to the 18th, and that will give us time to look at the document. Make, make it it, I, I mean, I, I agree. It needs to be done, and I, I think maybe it is a little shady, however it kind of went down, but it does need to be done, but I want everybody to have the warm and fuzzy about it. I mean, if we're spending, you know, all of this extra money, I want to make sure everybody's content so if we have to wait a little bit so that everybody feels like all the ducks are lined up then I'm good with waiting. Good. Just the only, it, it, the only question on. I would ask is um, do we know how long the bids are good for and um, when was it actually bid? It was bid, we just opened the bids last week and okay. it was one of Joe's engineers. Friday I believe Friday. Thursday or Friday. I mean, it was just the end of last week, yeah. So even if they're only good for a minimum of 30 days, and I can't imagine the documents are less than that, you should be fine delaying. Sometimes they have a short amount of time that the bids are good for. That's the only reason for asking that question. But it sounds like that's very doable. Okay, Rocky, last comment. <laughs> I think, and, and I think I heard Jackie say it, and she brings a valid point. You want to make sure that this dollar amount <coughs> That need have to be in your budget, but it needs to be appropriated. So I, I, I was trying to hear her what number she came up with. If you've got enough money there appropriated, legal ability to spend that's over twelve, then you're gonna be okay. My 
I believe she said there were 400,000 appropriated. Yes. Yeah, that's that's it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're good. And 100,000 in the, um, the uh, sewer projects. And the 400,000 is in the maintenance uh, street project, okay. or maintenance sewer project. Sounds good. And that's not have the other numbers to be put out in front. Okay, thank you. Now you're on, Rocky. You should be ability up there. Close to the table. Uh, roll call. Yeah, Rocky. Yeah. 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 Motion carries eight to zero. City attorney update. Two quick matters, folks. Uh, is Dave speaking with the meeting? Yes. I just wanted to report, at least from what I understood, at least as of last Friday, we're still waiting on the quick claim deed on that 1600 East project, unless Dave has got any update that came in today. I think they were waiting until today to find out. No update. Okay. So that, that project is still on hold. The other thing is, I had sent to the mayor today and to uh, Alderman Dorchinez, and also, I believe, to Julie, uh, a proposed ordinance that amends the uh, three different sections of your city code relating to uh, boat docks, schemas, electrolyzed structures or improvements, and what needs to be required, and revising the permit process until we had a conversation about that. So it is. Ernie, I sent that to you this morning, so uh, with a suggestion that you take it back to your late committee and take a look at it. And uh, I know we had a discussion that there were certain things that was not going to apply to campsites and lake block tenants. They tried to address that, so take a look at it. I got the uh, application form there. And then uh, once you get a chance to read it, the mayor and, and Julie, give me a holler and we'll see what we can do. But, uh, You've got the benefit of what I put together for you to look at. It's in your, it's in your uh, I guess now. Right. Any questions? No. Right. Thank you, sir. You got it. Mayoral report. This seems to be a year of transition. As tonight, we swore in a new assistant fire chief, along with two new captains in the fire department, and swearing in of a new police officer. We will meet with school officials this Friday, but I was told earlier it will be changed to discuss an additional school resource officer. We have approved a few sewer projects, including one using the BDD funds. We will continue to improve our infrastructure using these funds. This past Saturday, I attended the Rogan Donahoe benefit, the nine-year-old boy with cancer, and was very pleased with the response from our community. The next week, this next week, I will attempt to set up a census committee and will be asking for volunteers from our community. They will include senior citizens, veterans, clergy, chamber members, newspaper, radio personnel, and I hope at least one alderman will volunteer to be on this committee. The census is very important to our community and I hope we will get the cooperation from the citizens to be counted. I was told today we will get somewhere around $150 in federal aid per, per person. So we need to count everyone. And that's for the whole 10 years of the census. This past week, the city tore down its 39 structure, and then next week we will tear down the 40. This program seems to be well received by our community, and especially the neighbors and the neighbor, neighborhoods that they live in. Thank you very much. Committee report. Discussion and or motions to approve, adopt, and or deny, and or table, and or amend, and or refer to an appropriate committee in whole or in part the matters regarding the following subject matters discussed at the committee level. Street and Sewer Committee, Alderman Olive. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first motion to recommend to the City Council to accept the proposal for Benton and Associates <clears throat> with an estimated project cost. Of one thousand or one thousand one hundred and twenty one thousand two hundred and thirteen dollars. Thank you, Ronnie. I couldn't get that out. 
uh, to include professional engineering, surveying, te technical services regarding the sanitary, sanitary sewer extension from new wave communications to RP Lumber on Illinois Route 104. With May the, I suggest the following addition to that motion? Yes, Your Honor. And to authorize the mayor to sign any documents related to such proposal. I, I just hadn't got to that point yet. All right, I, I figured you did. But, but thank you, y'all. Motion of all in all. Second. You got something to add to that. Yeah, but and the minimum that the money will come from the BD, BBD fund. BDD. BDD. Okay. Motion of all in all in a second. Bottom and bud. Questions or comments? Questions. Okay. On the BDD fund, um, what line item are you going to have that all to? Are you going to have it to the um, street sewer alley parking lot line item, or are you going to divide that up with the some engineering fees and another line item? I would like to defer that that question to my finance chairman, who has. Uh, we, we have been in discussion about this. This is the, and I think uh, we're going to wait till uh, May to your new budget or whatever. This actually will not start till May May first. Okay. Uh, we'll have to get all the stuff together in time. Roger gets everything. We can be able to make it wait till the project doesn't start till May first. The actual construction project or the engineering. The engineering, I think, we're going ahead and do, but the, the project itself. Uh, yes, whatever schedule meets the city's needs. Well, it'll come out of the street. Well, I don't have that BDD right here in front of me. Okay. We'll talk to this weekend. Huh? We'll talk to this weekend. I'll talk to Jackie this week to get that all clarified. Okay. Before it comes out. Roll call. John Burdo? Yes. 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 Yes.
Now, obviously, if we can't operate like that, for example, this, the sewer department, the sewer is an enterprise fund also, it doesn't stand alone. As you well know, the money goes into the general fund, and then when, it, when the, when the um, extra money is needed by the sewer fund, it's, it's, it's robbing from Peter to pay Paul. In other words, it's coming from other entities in the city, and, and so I don't know if, if everybody's getting their, their fair shake. So if the, if the airport fund could stand alone, I'd like to get it out of the general fund and have it all be a, a standalone, just like you got the airport fuel account. But we don't know, I think, you, I don't think you knew that night, if, uh, if this amount of money uh, is, goes into that balancing of the ledger to say that the expenses are, are equal to the revenues or not. Because it, on this report that I, you gave us in this last uh, packet that I got right, it says that the airport fuel accounts got a balance of 254000 Now, as you well know, what happens to that balance is, for example, if Mr. Newberry has to purchase gasoline to fill the tanks, then this drops down. But then if we don't have to buy gasoline for a while, then the, and then the profit goes back up, it'll exceed that amount that he just had in the account. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So, have, have you had a chance to do that or no? Okay, well, we'd like to, if you could, um, I'm not saying this is a priority project. I mean, we've, we've been doing it like this for ever since I've been on the council, but we'd like to, if we can, uh, we'd like to do that. So if you could find out if at the end of the last fiscal year, is this money is this money going to the balancing act? The airport fuel account, is that money going into to the balancing act to tell us whether we're in the, we're in the red or the black? Because for years now, what we've tried to do is, we, uh, for example, uh, the city paid for all the electricity that was being used at all the hangars. A lot of those hangars, they had heaters and, and refrigerators and a lot of things that personal things that uh, the city was supporting. And, uh, and through this council's, maybe not this council, but the council in their infinite wisdom in, the, in years past decided to separate all those hangers with their own meters. And so they're paying for their own meters. Um, they're also paying uh, for other things now that they, they did in the past. So, um, and now we've got extra income from several years ago when we made the wise decision to put in the east-west runway uh, we, we had to buy more land than we needed for the runway, and now, and, and the last time I heard it, we were making like $40,000 a year more uh, than we had coming in uh, when we didn't have the runway. And it was strictly because of the fact that it, it made us look like geniuses, but what we did was we just stumbled into that because we, had, we were mandated to buy that property. We had to have a certain amount of property in excess of, of what the East West Runway was. And uh, so we were making some money there. So I don't know where this is ending up uh, right now, but uh, as the mayor suggested at that meeting, if we could find out, if, the, if you could show us what the, the, the numbers are from the end of the last fiscal year, are we, where are we, or how far are we away from being in the black? That's what I'd like to have. It's the same part of that, Mr. Newberry, a uh, couple of older than myself have met. When were the fuel tanks put in? You know. uh, two thousand September two thousand nine. Ten years ago. What's the lifespan of those tanks? Long Thirty, time. forty years? Maybe longer. Yeah. Do you know approximately what cost those tanks were? Uh I think how the you know, with grant money and everything else, I think they actually came down to probably about seventy thousand dollars. The uh, tanks were about 500000 So, is grant money always available for those tanks, or would you, would you assume that grant money would be available 30 years from now from them? Uh, I would say so if they needed replaced at that time. And who decides to replace them? Is uh, that something we did because we were doing a lot of extra work <clears throat> and our engineers at the time decided those needed to be replaced? No. Uh, I decided they needed to replace because we had underground <coughs> single wall tanks and they were leaking. And uh, every gallon we sold, we had to pay somebody $15, $16 an hour. You know, a union employee, and we, we shut down now. <coughs> we shut down now, we're, you know, 24 7. And we don't have to deal with the testing and putting in cathodic protection for leaky tanks. And, 
Any other questions? Alderman Bud? Mayor talked to me today about this, and I will try within the next couple of weeks to come up with what the numbers need to be for Earth. But you got to give me time to get it done. And like I told you, we've been doing like this for years, but we should know. I will get those numbers together. I intend to go back five years. All right. Motion adjourn, please. All right. Motion adjourn by Alderman Burdle. Second. Second by Alderman Olive. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. Boy, it's cold in here, man. That's a little bit.